Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center and today we're taking a look at some of our favorite automatic knives on the market. Let's check them out. So as more and more states have kind of amended their laws uh, over the last several years, we've seen a real surge in popularity of automatic knives and there's a lot of stuff out there today so this is a really good time to kind of see what's out there and dip your toes into the market if you, uh, if you maybe haven't bought an automatic knife before. Now, automatic knives are different from assisted openers where you're you know, either using a thumb stud or a flipper to act upon the blade and then a spring takes over and completes the opening action. With a, an automatic knife, you're either pushing a button or sliding a switch and it's gonna open the blade fully from there. Uh, and there's kind of two main different styles. There's conventional folding knives, just given the automatic treatment, or there's an OTF or out the front automatic. And we'll get into both of those, um, but I think we're gonna start with some of the, uh, the side openers or, uh, or folding automatic knives. And we're gonna take a look at, uh, at the push button mechanisms out there today. And I think one of the things that's uh, kind of more closely associated with the term switchblade than anything else is like the old school Italian stiletto knives. And for that, gonna have kind of a representation of that here. This is the Godson from Protec, and Protec, I think definitely one of the foremost recognized names in automatic knives out there. And this is sort of the smaller version of their Godfather, but this is kind of their slightly stylized take on that Italian stiletto. A few different versions of this are out there. Uh, Price-wise, they're not too bad. They start at about 140 uh, and go up from there. This particular one uh, with the uh, tuxedo look is about 225 right now, but you can get this kind of really decked out. This is a really good platform of a knife to do some really fancy stuff with. Since you have the opportunity for inlays there, they'll do some cool stuff to the, uh, the button and the blades as well. So the, the sky's almost the limit in terms of what you can do. Now, as with most Protex, we've got an aluminum body here with antique ivory micarta inlays on both sides, which is quite nice, and a single position pocket clip on this particular knife. Blade is 154 cm, comes in about uh, about three point, uh, or a little over three inches, uh, but not quite three and a quarter. And the action on these guys is quite good. Now to close it, you do push the button, and now the way these, uh, these push button side openers work is the blade is essentially under tension right now. And as soon as you push that button, it's gonna fl fly open quite nicely. And it's one of those things you notice when you, when you kind of open a lot of these, Protex have kind of their own signature sound to them. Like if I weren't even looking at the knife, at this point I'd know that was a Protex, which is kind of funny. Um, but really cool little knives, really cool take on that classic stiletto. And Protec does a broad range of stuff beyond this, of course. They even do some things uh, for Boker and some other companies uh, building some of their automatics. So definitely check these guys out. Now, of course, the nice thing about a side opening push button automatic is the sky's kind of the limit in terms of the creativity there. You can have all kinds of different blade shapes. You can have recurves, bigger blades, not just kind of needle points like that. And for a more shall we say EDC friendly blade, I wanna talk about the Kershaw Launch Series, which the whole series of knives, I think is a great place to start if, uh, if you're not sure quite yet, if, you, if you're really gonna to take to an automatic knife, because the quality you get here is really good, especially when you throw in the price. This particular model, um, not this exact one, this is an older uh, discontinued one that's actually mine, so pardon the scuff, but current versions of the Launch One sell for just under a hundred bucks. And you're getting some good materials here as well. The bodies on these guys are aluminum as well. And we've got a black washed blade here, about 3.4 inches, and we've got CPM 154 steel. So the powdered version or powdered equivalent of the 154 CM we just saw on that Protec. And this, they've got a whole bunch of different body styles, including some stiletto inspired designs. But this is a shape that I just really love. I'd probably have bought this knife no matter what lock was on it, because you've got a really elegant shape and a great slicing profile, nice high flat grind, fairly thin steel. It's just a rock star. The action on these guys are quite good as well. Maybe not as good as the Protec, but especially when you consider it's just a hundred bucks, there's really nothing at all to apologize for on the action of these guys. It truly is up there with you know, anyone else essentially. Of course, this is a very modern looking knife, but there's been a pretty long tradition of kind of old school knives 
uh, having an automatic opening mechanism. And we're seeing some of that come back nowadays. And I think first and foremost among that is the Buck 110, this particular version being the 110 Elite Automatic. Now you can get this in the classic old school variant of the, uh, the Buck 110 with the wood inlays and the brass with the 420HC blade. That starts about 150. The Elite version here swaps out the steel. So you've got S30V in this case, but same profile going on. G10 inlays and a nickel silver uh, stainless bolster instead. So it's a different, a little bit of a different look, maybe slightly more classy, a little less rustic, but I mean, it's still a classic 110. Now this does have a push button release here, but the locking mechanism in this case is not provided by that push button. I mean, I can push on this all you want and I'm actually not able to, to close the blade, which is a bit of a, it throws you off a little bit if you're, you know, real, uh, an old hand at push button automatics because your instinct's gonna be to close it. But this is still a classic lock back in this case. So kind of taking the, uh, one of the most successful locking mechanisms Ever to, ever to be put on a pocket knife or a folding knife, I should say, since you know the 110 is more of a, a belt folding knife. But marrying that with a spring release on that push button, that's pretty cool. I mean, there's, there's a lot to love about that. And of course, it's a classic 110. You've got a great all around blade shape. Great for hunting, of course, as the uh, folding hunter name in 110 suggests, as well as being a good larger EDC if you need a, a you know, heavier grip on a work knife, because you got plenty of room there and plenty of thickness there to really get a solid hold. And whereas that buck takes the uh, the classic lock back and, uh, and marries it up with some automatic technology, this next guy uses a liner lock and brings the, uh, brings the automatic into play. And it's got a little bit of a, maybe an older school custom vibe to it as well. This is the Terrain 365, P38 model. And what's special about this guy, still a push button release, but this is a knife that's known as having a dual action. So you can see there, as I close the knife, you heard that little uh, spring pop. Now the spring is reset. You've got the push button there, pops open quite nicely, but fold it back up. Now in this position, I can actually open this manually. You don't have to use the, uh, the push button action, the automatic action at all. You can just use it just like any regular old liner lock, hence the, the dual action in the name of this knife. Pretty cool, uh, pretty cool thing. You don't see that too often, uh, but it's certainly something nice uh, if you don't want to be a little more uh, flashy when pushing that button. But it's a cool knife overall as well, especially for a smaller gentleman's knife with kind of those custom knife vibes. And these guys come in uh, with more of a, uh, a lower end custom price tag to coming in about 500 bucks. It's a little bit on the thicker side, so you've still got a decent hold on this, especially on heavier jobs. But kind of the star of the show, apart from that cool automatic action here, is the blade itself. It's just under three inches, about two and three quarters in fact, and it's made out of teravantium, which is a dendritic cobalt material that's a lot harder than steel and should have an edge that lasts an awful long time as a result. Really cool pieces overall. Now, one of the areas where automatics have traditionally held a, a larger percentage of use and have knives really catered towards these types of users is folks who are on the front lines, whether military or rescue, that sort of thing. So the next knife, I'm, I'm gonna look at one of these kind of battle ready automatics. Stuff like the Microtech SOCOM Elite come to mind, but also the Gerber 06 Auto. Now this is one of those knives that's just super solid. Uh, they start about the $170 mark and top out right now at least uh, with this guy right here with the uh, multicam handle coming in about 200. The handles themselves, nice and girthy, kind of chunky in a good way, a little bit like myself in that regard, but definitely ready for those uh, more trying environments out there. Blade, traditional drop point, comes in at about 3.8 inches and we've got S30V steel with a black coating on this guy. Now you can also get it with a Tonto profile, although not in this multicam variant. And you can also get either of the blade shapes right now with uh, partial serrations as well, which are definitely gonna come in uh, more important or, or be ranked more importantly for certain professional users for sure. Now the handles themselves are aluminum. I've got just enough length on there for my slightly larger than average hands to have a you know, an unrestricted grip in the main section there. And then on the back, you've got the protruding pommel here to act as a striking surface. 
Now the automatic action on these guys, you still have a push button. There's also the first knife we've looked at so far that has a secondary safety, and that's gonna work in the closed or the open position. So with the, the slider switched forward, or the switch slid forward, I should say, you're not gonna be able to push that button and open the guy. You gotta open it till you see the red dot and push the button to open it. Now these have never been known as like the fastest automatics out there, but again, the word solid definitely comes to mind. Solid and reliable for sure. All right, now we're gonna talk about rescue automatics. Uh, and that gives us a good chance to talk about Benchmade and move over a little bit from the push button mechanisms out there into some of the other things, starting with Benchmade's automatic version of their Axis Lock. And I think rescue personnel out of everyone out there probably is served maybe the most well by the, uh, by the rapid access and convenience of an automatic knife, especially if the adrenaline's flowing, chaos is high, and may, they may only have one hand available. Definitely, definitely useful. And Benchmade's triage is just a great model. And actually one I think makes a pretty good EDC shape as well, beyond just the rescue capabilities. And these guys come in about 276 right now. The blade itself is N680 and it does have a black coating. That coating, of course, is going to help with corrosion resistance, but that N680, even without the, uh, the coating, is a very corrosion resistant steel. And you've got a really cool profile here that's going to work well at, you know, if you need to get under some clothing or other things, the tip is raised up a little bit, so it's less likely to actually like poke into the person you're trying to help, but it's got a nice slicey profile overall as well. We've also got a spine mounted safety on this case, or on this particular knife. You just slide that forward and that's gonna work to lock the blade or lock the lock into the open position, but also prevent it from being opened if you've got it closed and slid forward. You're not gonna have to worry about that accidentally coming open. But when you're ready to access, slide it back. All you do is pull back on the access lock bar and the springs are gonna send that blade right out. The handles on this guy are aluminum with a black G10 inlay for a little more grip. You've got a single position pocket clip on this version, and you've got a glass breaker there on the end, which very important, especially for the, uh, the rescue applications, of course. And we've also got one more trick up the sleeve of this guy in that we've got a seat belt cutter or a, a fabric hook, shall we say, that's also automatic. You just pull back on this small switch, there we go, and it flies open as well. It's single action, it's not gonna uh, close automatically Automatically, like some of the uh, double action OTFs we're gonna look at shortly, but nice spring-loaded action on that guy too. All right, next we're gonna move to the OTF, the out the front automatic, and we're gonna start with something that's a little bit in between uh, what's kind of more standard versus the, uh, the push button locks we've seen so far. And this is the Heretic Knives Hydra, comes in about 440 bucks right now. And this is a single action out the front automatic. And where that's different is you push the button on this guy, it'll shoot the blade out, but you have to manually reset the blade. And it's done, uh, at least on this guy, it's done like so. You've got a small safety switch above the actual push button. So this is gonna be a little tricky to do while trying to show it to you on camera, but you push that guy out of the way, push down on the button lock, and you actually pull on the tail here. And that's going to essentially, once you're back here, the blade itself is under tension and it's loaded, it's ready to go. Slide that back in. And then when you're ready, just move that safety out of the way again and push. And one of the benefits of, of this type of action over some of the double action stuff is all of the spring tension can go towards opening the blade and the action you get on this knife as a result is pretty much among the best out there. It is rocket fast and you can feel that feeling in your hand when you push the button, it just feels awesome. Blade here is S35VN, about three and five eighths of an inch of it. Nice kind of drop point, eh, almost a spear point profile with some decorative file work going there on going on there on the spine and a red aluminum chassis in this case. And just some nice details too. Like I said, that safety travels over kind of nicely. You've got a nice thumb pad here for when you go to pull open that, uh, that charging handle. So you've got a nice positive grip and a very, uh, very out there pocket clip on this guy as well. But overall, just a really awesome action on this knife. All right, now we're gonna get to the full on double action OTFs. And there's probably two, two knives or two companies at least uh, that kind of lead the pack on this. Uh, to a slightly lesser extent, you've got Benchmade with their Infidel series, but you've also got kind of Microtech who 
just have been leading the charge on this style of knife for many, many years. Now, when I say double action automatic, this doesn't just uh, push the blade open with a spring. You can also close it the same way with either a switch on the side of the body like this or a switch on the front like this infidel. But the way these work is while the blade is open and while the blade is closed, they're not under spring tension at all. They're just at rest essentially. And as you slide this switch forward or backward when you're closing, slowly the pressure is going to build until you get to that kind of tipping point where once you pass it, it releases that spring that has built up the pressure by sliding that forward and rockets the blade out. This particular knife from Microtech is the Combat Troodon, which I think is their signature knife for sure. Uh, they start a little bit under 500 bucks. He got a three and three quarter inch blade. This particular one I think is really cool. Uh, it's a $520 knife with, what do they call it? The uh, bronze apocalyptic finish. You have the, a little bit of bronze coloration combined with a stone washing that looks really good, especially against this green. Now, one of the things that Microtech likes to do is they'll use kind of, they'll switch the steels up a little bit, I should say. Um, as they go through, they'll kind of pick what they think is the best right now to put on it. Uh, and they'll mark it on here always. This one currently is M390, but you could see these in uh, CPM uh, 20 CVs or uh, 204Ps, a few other things as well. Uh, maybe I, th I think I've seen a few in LMAX over the years. I could be remembering incorrectly. Um, but that's kind of fun too. If you're a collector of this style of knife, you can kind of see all the, uh, or grab all the different things that he does put out. The handle is a little bit offset and the double edge dagger here is uh, offset a little bit as well to kind of echo the front line of that handle. Uh, but you can get a few other blade shapes on this guy as well. I've seen tantos and spear points and drop points, that sort of thing as well. If you'd rather have uh, a more, shall we say, EDC suitable shape than the double edge. But the double edge is certainly very usable and with those two edges and that high end steel, you've got a lot of sharpened edge there to work with. I mean, getting uh, a bit over seven inches of, uh, of 20 CV or M390 in this case, you're going to be able to cut for a long time. You've got a deep carry pocket clip here on the back, which is reversible. So this is going to be a completely ambidextrous knife. And you've got a glass breaker there on the end as well. All right, next up is Benchmade's Infidel, uh, which switches things up a little bit. Instead of having a switch from the side of the, uh, the chassis itself, the switch is mounted on the face or on the cover of the handle. And one of the advantages of this style of, uh, of switch is you can have a pocket clip that doesn't have to be reversible in order for this knife to be completely ambidextrous, at least on a, uh, a double edge profile such as this, because the experience is going to be exactly the same no matter which side of the knife you're, or which hand you pull this knife out with. Now there's a mini version of this knife with a blade just over three inches, starts about 375, uh, but for 425, you get the full version that comes with a D2 blade and the aluminum handle. Uh, but they will put out some special editions now and then, including this one, uh, which is good for, I think most of the rest of 2021, if you wanna get your hands on one. And it has an S30V blade with the blue aluminum, comes in a bit more expensive at about 446 as well. Now the back side of this knife is nice and smooth, so it's going to be easy in and out of your pocket. But the front side, you've got two different directions of kind of milled grooves in the handle here or milled peaks in the handle. That's going to give you a lot of traction both fore and aft as you're manipulating the blade. And the action works the same way. It's just a front firing or a cover firing switch instead of the side fire. Build up that pressure, push past, blade flies open. Now there's certainly a lot of folks out there doing OTFs, um, but two others I want to talk about today that are kind of approaching things from maybe a slightly different angle or trying to push the envelope a little bit and are worth paying attention to uh, are Hogue and Sog. And I'm going to start with the Hogue and I want to show you their compound OTF, which looks uh, not too dissimilar from what we've seen so far, but in this case, the word compound really speaks to the handle construction here. Now, rather than going with a full aluminum handle like the OTFs we've looked at so far, they've kept aluminum internals, but the handle itself is made out of G10 on the outside. And as such, they've been able to keep the weight on this guy way, way down for this style of knife. I mean, the, uh, the last two we looked at were just under and just over five ounces. This particular knife comes in just 3.6. Doesn't sound super dramatic, but you can definitely feel the difference. It's going to be a lot friendlier uh, if you're carrying it all day long, especially in some lighter pants out there. 
Now the Hogue compound comes in uh, just over 300 right now. And you've got two blade shapes right now. You've got a Tonto and this nice clip point that I'm really big fan of. The, the angles of it are, are just, they look really good to my eye. What can I say? This is an Alan Elishowitz design, by the way. And he gets, he gets those lines and those proportions just right. Great, great EDC friendly shape. We've got S30V steel here with a nice stone washed finish, although black is also available. And the handles, few different colors out there. You can get a plain black if you want. You can get some uh, slightly more colorful ones if you want. But the G10s uh, that have some layering in it have what Hogue calls their G Mascus pattern. It's still G10, but they randomize it a little bit, randomize the layers a little bit. So you get this more chaotic appearance a little bit rather than the more defined layers that you might expect to see. So definitely a nice signature element from them. This is a side firing automatic, as you can see. Action is quite good, as you can hear. Uh, and we've got a deep carry pocket clip here that is reversible. Uh, and there's a few other versions of this too. They actually make a version of this for SIG, the firearm company, that uh, has some finishes that match some of the, uh, the gun products they make. Just overall, a very cool knife and definitely a company to keep an eye on if you haven't already. All right, next up is SOG and their new Pentagon OTF definitely needs to be talked about here. Uh, now this isn't available just yet. This is gonna be available a little bit later in 2021. So I've got a pre-production sample right here. Uh, but this guy comes in about 350. And in the world of production or mass production OTF automatics, kind of one of the things you can never really completely get away from is there's a little bit of blade wiggle in the open position. And there are some uh, some high-end custom stuff, the, uh, the Grant & Gavin Hawk Deadbolt, um, that, or sorry, deadlock, you know what I'm talking about, that have eliminated this, but so far we haven't really seen this on the, the mass market production side until just about now. The, these are by far the most rock solid OTFs on the production scale that I've held yet. Just a hint of a little bit of blade play on these, uh, on these pre-production samples. It's very, very minimal. And if they're able to maintain that into the production run, definitely, definitely going to be a little bit of a game changer. But apart from that, it's just a solidly designed automatic just on its own merits, even apart from that. Uh, Blade S35 VN. Uh, I don't actually have a spec on there, but we'll hold it up next to that Benchmade. Yeah, about the same as that guy right there. And really nicely ground, double edged, as you can see. Nice profile here on the handle, a little bit broader. Very, very good to hold on to. You got two pinch points here right on either side of the switch in the open position and that pocket clip on the side. Nice ambidextrous design overall. What I really like though, apart from just, you know, the rock solid construction going on is the switch itself. Uh, they kind of took a cue from the, uh, that Hawk design I mentioned a little bit ago. We've got an oversized switch, works the same way as any of the other of these switches so far, but because it's oversized enough, you never actually see the uh, the track underneath of uh, where it travels forward and aft. So you get the look of like a floating switch. It's just really nice. I like that little bit of detail. And of course, really nice action too. All right, now we're going to get into uh, a little bit of a kind of funny genre. Um, and that is the California compliant automatic knife. And this has become a genre because of course, California is a big state. There's a lot of people there for companies to sell knives to and automatics under two inches and automatics bigger than two inches shared kind of different legal statuses from each other. And as such, you see a lot of sub two inch bladed automatics out there that are dubbed California compliant. Uh, so I'll talk about a few of those here. You can get it in, in either of the styles too, push button or uh, OTF. But at first, I'm going to talk about another knife from the Launch series. This is the Launch 9 in the blue finish, but a bunch of different colors can be had. Uh, same, essentially the same specs as the larger Launch 1 that we saw earlier. In fact, same color just about even. Um, but price is about 90 bucks, so a little bit cheaper, but there's still a lot going on with these knives. They so can't bring the price down too much, unfortunately. But the blade still CPM 154 aluminum handle and about 1.8 inches here. And it's a really nice little blade shape. I like this amongst all their California compliant models because it's a blade shape that just really speaks to me. And one of the other things that's kind of cool about the, uh, the smaller versions or the smaller knives in the launch series 
is the spring action feels proportionally even stronger than the big guys. You gotta really, you gotta kind of hold on to one of these guys uh, when you open it for sure. Deep carry pocket clip on this particular one, and it is reversible. And even though the the lock like so is definitely a right hand bias lock, it can certainly be closed with the left hand. Maybe not so easily one handed for me being a right hander, but if you're a lefty, it might be a little easier. Actually, I usually like to close these two handed anyway for myself personally. But like I said, you can get OTFs in this style as well. And this next one, it's another Microtech. This is the Exoset. Really shows you, you know, the two different tacks you can take in that sub two inch range. You can either go with a smaller handle as a result and go for complete discretion, or you can go with something like the Exoset that gives you that shorter blade length, but you still have a nice full handle to grab onto. So it, it doesn't feel as much like you've got a little knife as it does with some of the other design choices out there. Now you can get this in a double edge profile if you if you like that classic uh, classic OTF look. I actually really like this Tonto for a, for a more utilitarian shape though. Um, just, it, it works really well. And again, you got that nice full grab to, uh, to hold on to, to really put the blade to work. And that's kind of achieved in this case because they went for a kind of money clip style design with this nice broad clip on this side. This of course is one of the more popular uh, bounty hunter variants that uh, that is definitely one of the cooler options out there. But a bunch of different colors on these as well and those aren't uh, kind of pre-distressed like these are if, if that's not your thing. Prices on these start around the $250 mark. These bounty hunters come in just over 300 and you've got that great Microtech action. But because the blade is smaller and thinner, there's, I don't know, it feels almost a little more precise than some of the larger OTFs out there. I don't know if that's just me imagining things or not, but they are really cool. All right, last but not least, I've got one more CA compliant version, uh, the Hogue A1 Micro Switch. And this is another one that went with the small blade, but kept a larger handle on it. So you can really feel confident putting that smaller blade to work. Blade in this case is CPM 154 about 1.95 inches, so coming in just under where you want to be. And pricing on these starts around 127.50 or so, and you can get it with a drop point or this cool Warncliffe profile. Handles are aluminum. You've got a synthetic backspacer there as well. Comes down to a point, so you can kind of bash on things or use it as a some kind of glass breaker maybe if you need to. And then you've got that push button action on the side. They don't just do OTFs over there at Hogue. And you've got the switch that's gonna work in the open or closed position on this guy as well. So I'll close them up. And I would definitely recommend engaging the lock if you wanna use this feature, but you've also got a bottle opener as you can see, which is something the larger X1 Micro Flip doesn't have because it's got a larger blade instead. But I don't know, maybe we'll call that a, a consolation prize for having the uh, having to do the, uh, the slightly smaller blade, you get that added functionality there. But unlock the safety, push the button, you've got a nice nifty little blade that flies right out at your command. All right, that's all I've got to show you today. Now, of course, this is not everybody who makes an automatic out there, but I hope this kind of shows kind of a, a breadth of the range of options out there, um, kind of describes the different styles and gets you a good feel for some things to check out. Let me know what your favorites were down in the comments. And if you want to get your hands on these, we will leave links in the description to take you over to the Knife Center. While you're over there, make sure to sign up for our Knife Rewards program, because if you're going to spend your money on one of these knives, might as well earn some free money to spend on your next one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center signing off. See you next time.